What's up, you nerds? Welcome back to Yellow Spandex. This week we talked about Michael B. Jordan's next superhero series, Raising Dion. Of course, Mortal Kombat updates, new logo, and now filming. That's pretty ins- exciting, I-, I would say. Agents of S.H.I.E.L.D. finale. We finally oh, got yeah. through watching all of Agents of S.H.I.E.L.D. Jeez. We covered a lot. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Also, a little bit of uh, Dora the Explorer we talked about. <laughs> yep. And how uh, awesome and silly that movie is. Uh, speaking of movies, the last thing we talked about was Rambo Last Blood, which uh, blew all of our expectations out the window. Yeah, if you if you want to, you, you need to wait to get to that part because that part is a great part. <laughs> it's wow. Coming at you right now on Yellow Spandex. Hey everybody. Hey. <laughs> are you keeping notes this time? Yeah, because I that works every out. time we do the the recap, I'm like, what do we say? <laughs> what, what are we, we talking about? What are we talk about? Oh, so no, it's probably, probably something it. about X Men, Mortal Kombat, and something yeah, else. Exactly right? the same three things we always Actually, talk about. You know, it's funny. This is a quick recap. Though, so last, not last time, like two times ago, I guess, or last time, one of the last couple times, we were talking about like, oh, that Jurassic Park short film, which I still mm-hmm. haven't watched yet. Maybe it'll be on YouTube. It released on YouTube the night we recorded. Exactly. And nice. then and they're like, oh, like, is Mortal Kombat filming? They start filming the day we recorded. <laughs> like everything like happened that day. Yeah. Um, it's awesome. I texted this to Josh as soon as I saw the announcement because I we were like, I was like, well, there's this picture floating around of production starting. I was mm-hmm. like, it has to be fake, right? <laughs> it looks at it. It's actually like the screenwriter posted it. I'm like, okay, I guess it's legit. <laughs> it must be legit. And, <laughs> and then uh, they posted the poster for it. So I don't want to get overly angry about it yet because we haven't seen anything for the movie. Yeah. But not many fans are very happy with the logo. <laughs> the logo literally hasn't changed in like 25 years. And they decided <laughs> to just change it. So I guess we'll see. Maybe it has something to do with the movie. I don't know. Yeah. Um, it's just weird that they would change that one thing like right off the bat. I got to see this logo. What's the, um, I want to see what the difference is. And yeah. then also it says coming soon. And they didn't spell it with a K. Oh yeah, that was weird. Oh, Isn't that okay. interesting? It's like we. It, it looks more like um like a tattoo or something, you know? Yeah. It, it, the textures are different now too, like because they're mixed textures. Like the top of the dragon head as is just drawn, but then like the when you, as, <laughs> as when you're going down, it kind of looks like it turns into stone. Like yeah. I, I, there's it, too many themes here. They made it look like it's like an amulet, like on a ruin or something. Which mm-hmm. maybe that's part of the movie. It's just weird though because you look up Mortal. Con- there's one here like in Hebrew. And it's it's the, same the same dragon. <laughs> it's just never changed. The closest it's changed is the, this one here. Mm-hmm. That was the most they'd ever changed. Well, it's got a little then. bit of texture on it, but the face is still the same. It's the same shape. Yeah. yeah. So like if you black that out, then it would be the same shape. Yeah. It's the like, shape of that face. This new face looks kind of like a Disney princess. <laughs> <laughs> it looks like Mushu. You can't really find a lot of Mortal Kombat merch around. I guess I talked to a friend and they're like, well, the video game makes so much money. They're not really concerned about it, right. which is weird because you could still make a crap ton of money on yeah. merch. I don't, yeah, know, why. I don't know. Like, I mean, I, I was like looking for like a pin or something mm-hmm. like that. So I was looking on like, Etsy. Who doesn't want to make more money? Right? I don't understand that. <laughs> I was looking on Etsy for like a patch for like my book bag and stuff. And the new Mortal Kombat movie logo looks like something I'd find on Etsy. Yeah. Like somebody be like, hey, here's my interpretation. Like a deviant art thing. Like, but, hey, here's my cool version of my Mortal Kombat. Yeah, it's just weird. And then also just, you know. I would it, post it on Instagram. The full <laughs> the full poster says coming soon, but it's just spelled like C-O-M-I-N-G. It was oh, like, they missed it. And it was just like, <laughs> huh. It's not like a unforgivable thing. It's just weird because it's like. Unforgivable. You, yeah. you know, like if they wanted to get like fans like real hyped up, what would have really gotten everybody hyped up is like the original logo with some sort of like, it could be changed a little bit but like in the way that like annihilation or mk9 yeah. or whatever and then coming soon with the k which is it sounds simple but it like i know i would have seen that like holy crap here it comes you know like <laughs> but i look at this i'm like huh i don't know if they understand this franchise <laughs> uh but we'll see i, I will say though the, the i was reading the screenwriters uh he did a s- series of uh tweets yeah. on the first day of shooting and uh Someone asked, um, how can you be filming? This is what I asked last time. How can you be filming when all the cast isn't announced? He's like, they're cast. They're just not announced. Mm-hmm. I guess they're trickling the release of the cast members to like keep the interest. The flow going of information, yeah. Um, but he's would say, like, there's not going to be as many characters in this as you think there are because I refuse to like overstuff the cast at the cost of the story. And I was like, well, there's this, that. I love that so, idea. So that's positive. Hopefully. We don't know if it's a good story yet. Yeah, we're hopefully, hoping. Hopefully, there's not too little char- enough characters. Yeah. Well, even just the uh, the not the not the actual characters, but like the number of characters they've announced so far is about the same as the first game. So that makes sense. You well, know, that's like, good. Yeah. Is this the game that George Clooney's Batman? What? No, <laughs> <laughs> but um, I don't know. Still, still cautiously optimistic. Yeah. Uh, IGN did a nice post though. They like 
gathered all the casting announcements into like one post and showed everybody everything. It was like interesting. I did realize I did recognize one person from something beyond besides Black Mirror. The guy that's playing Raiden was the Asian guy in the Warriors Three. Oh, in, okay. In Thor, and I guess he's looking for work now. He's got killed. But like, <laughs> he got killed um, off. But sure, yeah, yeah, that's cool. Once again, though, interesting choice because Raiden's never really been Asian. Mm. I know that doesn't make sense because he wears that Chinese hat and everything. But like, ever since the Christopher Lambert Raiden, yeah, they were yeah. just like, you know, what, he's, he's a white guy now. Yeah, because even in the game, it was so pixelated you couldn't quite tell. Yeah. But uh, and then yeah. Melina's going to be like a light skinned black girl, which mm-hmm. people are like, oh, that was an interesting choice. I was like, mm, we'll see. You know, I thought that people people the only complaint that I thought that was somewhat OK to have the complaint for was that she isn't she's supposed to be like the uh, like a clone of was it Melina, isn't that? Of Katana. Katana. Yeah. yeah. Sorry. And, <laughs> but the thing is, they I haven't even announced people. Katana because she might not be in it or maybe they might make Katana black, yeah. which would be a different choice. Um, once again, I can't say it'd be bad because Katana's literally been every other ethnicity. She should be a giraffe. <laughs> <laughs> She's Let's see him pull that shit off. <laughs> well, so the one thing they have going for Melina being slightly different is that um, she's a clone of Katana, but she also has like Tarkatan DNA, which is why she has the messed up teeth. Yeah. Tarkatans are like... She's half a, and half. Yeah, but She's like... She's mixed. Tarkatans are yeah. also like... <laughs> It's gonna, I don't know. It's going to be interesting to see how they portray it's that. Like those cookies. I guess that is possible because Tarkatans, in, if you played in MK11, they show that Tarkatans are kind of like humans. Mm-hmm. They, they're they signifying things like the big teeth, but they're all different kinds. So I guess there could be different sub ethnicities within that group. I don't know. I, <laughs> or we're about to see like how this whole universe works out or if it's just going to be like a fun movie and we ca- shouldn't think about no it. No one's going to care. I wouldn't care. <laughs> <laughs> well, I mean, this like, as far as like because the, the MK universe, I've said many times before, like has like a lot of lore that you can get. Like, really, it could be like just as deep as the Star Wars universe if they made movies about it. I'm gonna, I'm gonna say maybe not as deep as the <laughs> Star Wars universe, but I'm sure there's a yeah. lot. But it, I no, just it, want it, the Lin Kuei ninjas. Man. The lore, the lore is there. They haven't utilized it in movie form yet. Mm. Um, mainly because the John Tobias, who wrote the original lore, was like a comic book guy. Mm-hmm. So he he wrote the whole like Bible, and then writers have kept adding to it. But they haven't utilized it in a movie, and I, I kind of don't blame them because like they're like, well, the first movie did well, and we didn't really think about it that much. Second movie was another story, but then like they're like, you know, we've the games have been holding the story. So uh, I was talking to a friend Martin, who's a screenwriter, yeah, and he's like, well, if they're making so much money off the story in the games, they don't really need to concern themselves with the movies, right? And I was like, that kind of makes sense. They they just need to do enough to make money. They don't have to make it like a rich backstory because that's already exists. Mm. So fair mm. enough, I guess. I mean, I'm happy enough with the games. I mean, the movie would be cool, but <laughs> if I, I can't say that I would, you know, bankroll multi million dollars in something that's already exists somewhere else. You know, if you don't pay attention to like the fan base, like with mm-hmm. us complaining about the about the logo, you're gonna lose people. I mean, it may not happen with this movie. You might be like, oh, people will go see it, but it's yeah. gonna start like trickling down. I will say, here's the, the Transformer thing. style. Oh yeah, <laughs> I feel like it's to me at least, is not like an unforgivable sin just yet. But yeah. if the movie's terrible and they did that, it'll be like, okay, guys. From the start, I knew yeah. it. I knew it. But if like they changed, if that stuff's changed and the movie's great, then I think it'll re-ingrain in our head like, oh, the logo was fine. Mm. You know, like, yeah. So I don't I don't know. We'll People s- keep, can be forgiving. Lin Kuei Ninjas, just, just, just give it to me. <laughs> just make it a good movie. That's all it has. Just make it or a good movie. Just, Cyborg Ninjas simple. too. I mean, but I'm down for other than it. I'm actually an equal start- opportunist <laughs> when it comes to ninjas. Yeah. Other than it actually started filming the day we were talking about when is it filming, uh, I don't think there's any new news. No. It's just like it's still happening, and uh, the logo's weird. Yeah. Yep. So, is that anyway? What's next? Oh, uh, I was gonna. We should watch this little oh, the trailer. Trailer. Yeah, for let's this. do it. It's called Raising Dion. All right. We'll pause here for a second. We'll watch and we'll talk about it. I already like this kid. It's cool. Mm. I just watched the trailer and it sold me on that kid. That's cool. No, I I, I dig that. I, you said it's based on a comic book. Yeah. That's cool. The filming of it looks like it could be just a little cheesy, but I'm okay with cheesiness. It, it definitely looks like a Netflix yeah. like, great show. But Did like, you watch that? Like, There's something that came over. I don't know if it was Labor Day weekend or what it was, but it was like an Aliens kids movie. Was it the like the edge of the universe? It might have been something about the universe, I, edge of the world or something. I haven't I, watched it, but I heard that it was like definitely like trying to be Stranger Things. Yeah, it was trying to be a lot of different things. Gotcha. It was very over the top, like cheesy. Uh-huh. It was still fun. Okay. So I'm, I'm, I'm kind of glad they're making it, yeah. but I'm, I'm not going to go ahead and say that it's good. But this looked really good. It looked yeah. touching, but it had some looking like it's got some cheesy parts. Ooh. I still don't understand why they don't, you know, when you get like a, a video on a cell phone, why don't you just film it with a 
cell phone because it like, looks like, oh, this is really pristine video on your oh, cell yeah, phone. Yeah, yeah. Like, hey. This is in the future. Yeah. It's like the Pixel 20. <laughs> <laughs> All right. I don't know. Uh, Vince and I finally f- finished Shield. Yeah. Um, wait, do we even talk more about this Raising Dion thing? No, I, I was going to no, pretty good. Moving on. on. Okay, yeah. so, so, Shield's good. So uh, full spoilers ahead because Josh has been waiting for like a month for us to finish this. I almost forgot what it was about. <laughs> um, so like at the beginning of the season, they inter- or end of last season, they introduced the Chromacons. Yeah. I can't remember if it was the that end was of last season. That was the whole season. last season because remember the whole season? last season was the time travel oh, that's deal. right. And then this season, like Enoch, uh, he's more human. Like you can see like he's like, he likes interfering now and yeah. like making friends and stuff, even though he's still like monotone. And I guess you don't, and this is where the spoilers start, you find out at the end that, that they were like the whole thing. Like mm-hmm. they're the linchpin behind like everything. Um, and then the whole Izel character, they, with, they with really the quite explain what that was. Yeah. I'm, I'm sure if like I looked it up, there's some like, I don't Marvel think there's very lore. much behind that. Cause I remember trying to like, uh, I don't remember that much of this. Um, I don't remember finding anything. Cause we didn't ever like the thing is, so if you haven't, uh, hopefully you've seen this, but the, the thing is like Colson kind of makes a comeback, but it's like a guy named Sarge that looks like Colson and they mm-hmm. find out his DNA is the same. And then they find out Colson's in there somewhere and they never quite explain what he is. They yeah. just kind of, they kind of imply that that one monolith that creates fears had created him. And then he got possessed by whatever this thing was. Yeah. But there was some time thing and involved. Set back in time. But it's weird because they never <clears throat> actually like, they, like, Izel does the big bad guy monologue and uh, I think uh, Yo-Yo actually makes fun of her for it. Like, don't give me your bad guy speech. That's what yeah. happens right before you die. But I was like, if you're doing that, tell us the story because I she she started saying like what her plans were. Like, I want to know what the heck a Coulson is. Right. But they just kind of, they're like, well, there's monolith based on time. There's a monolith based on space. There's a monolith based on creation. You figure it out. Yeah. Um, and then that big surprise in the second to last episode where like Coulson turns and like kills May and then sends yeah. her through the thing. Yeah. That was a little bit like, okay, whatever. We need to wrap this up because I was like, well, of course she doesn't die because she's in the next season. Mm. But then she just wakes up on the other side and they're like, Izel's like, of course, like this realm where death doesn't matter. Whatever. Like, then why the fuck she kill her? And then yeah, yeah, and her to, like, her through, yeah. <laughs> mm. um, and then she just wakes up. But, uh, and then I don't know who the hooded figures were. I guess they're more of like Izel and Sarge's. Well, they look like they were kind of like people that were in charge of that little temple area. Yeah. Yeah. But, I liked everything up until that last episode. Oh, really? Yeah. I was like, oh, this is really kind of gaining some stuff. I mean, Izel's kind of a little bit cheesy, but the rest of the stuff seems oh, seems to be pretty fun. I didn't like, I did not like the the end where they're like, we need to bring him back. And like, we're just going to remake him. Like, what? That was, I don't, why? Inter- I, oh, I know, I know why on a meta sense where they're like, well, we're going to have a final season and we need yeah. to have, uh, well, we need to have him back. Coulson. But, yeah. But, it's, it, is, it is weird. Like the whole LMD thing. I have faith in it though, because whenever they make a cheesy choice, I'll like maybe hate the choice at the moment. Mm-hmm. And then whatever happens after that, if I ignore that the original choice was made, I'm like, okay, that's cool. Like, like may like almost dying. Yeah. And then they just swoop in and save. Swoop in like, and like, it should be fine. Okay, was that in may make any sense? Well, I did like the reveal though, with like Simmons coming in and then like just being like calm. And she's like fucking time travel guys. Exactly. Like you see the jump drive. Yeah. On me. <laughs> Oh, what is it? The big, the Zephyr one. Mm-hmm. Yeah. You start getting ideas of like, you start putting it together. And then the more Simmons explains, the further you get to know, like what the heck is actually going on. They have this undertone of like a sacrifice that Fitz and Simmons made because like, they're like, where's Fitz? She's like, I can't know. I'm like, yeah, they go back and like not be together. She doesn't want to know where Fitz is because the it's, brain they thing can scan the brains and stuff. See, I, it's just confusing. It's all. Yeah. Really I don't know. It, it's very, very confusing so at the very end. I saw it as like giant twist. Yeah. I saw it as that the next season is going to explore this whole, like turning the multiverse thing. Yeah. But it's, it kind of sucks to think of like, after all this time, our Fitz and Sim is not going to be together. Yeah, I know. Like that was like, it, they're like the Jim and Pam. Of yeah. This universe is like, the, the least we can have is the wedding. The last season. Yeah. You know, we I mean, I know, I, I know we had the wedding, but now, now it's implying that they like went back in time and never met mm-hmm. like that, like that. Like they've hurt each other. It's like, like Scott and Gene. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> I love that whole Gene. thing where like, he's just constantly like kind of pissed that like the other him got married to her. Oh, yeah, like, yeah. It's like, like, oh sh- yeah, he must've been better than me. Like, yeah. The whole thing. Like, you know, he must've had a bigger <laughs> yeah, yeah, it's liter- and it's literally him. Yeah. I also love like, he's so angry that like, no matter what she says, we'll just like, he'll just turn it the other way. Hmm. So she's like, 
it, you know, she, she's like, it, it wasn't that good. He's like, you're saying it wasn't good enough? He's like, well, I mean, he was good. He's like, are, are, am I not good enough? I'm like, yeah, sure, whatever. <laughs> He's you, you moron. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> and then. Just uh, like 10 minutes earlier. Yeah. <laughs> and then I like, uh, actually, I really like the dynamic between um, Fitz and uh, Deke. Yeah. How like. You you they actually did a good job of making Deke like very unlikable because mm-hmm. like the whole time when like Fitz and Simmons are like solving the problem and Deke is just repeating what they say like a second later yeah and then like finally like Deke starts contributing and then like you can see Fitz is like kind of proud of him and stuff and even though they're like the same age you see that like grandparent pride you know and stuff. And then he just blows it all apart by finding out like a whole other company's doing it for him. Yeah. Mm-hmm. I love when he like just stuff's dropping on Fitz like left and right. Yeah. And he's like, oh, by the way, you're a grandfather. I'm like, yeah. what the does, fuck? What does that mean? <laughs> I, I, I liked one of the other big surprises was when uh, Daisy f- like did the, her thing at Coulson and you finally got to see like the alien. Yeah, the face. The, the whole body, man, yeah. everything. That know? was pretty badass though because you... They, made, they implied that she unleashed everything mm-hmm. and that was the closest he could get and you just see him like bat her out of the way kind of you know like mm. it was it was a really good show of power but yeah after all that just to bring him back as an lmd and it's like huh it's a decision you're gonna save colson you're gonna save him because he's got to be in that next season so you're gonna save him and so and they kill him because <laughs> it's not really him it's like a shell of him that somebody else has kind of like made mm-hmm. and it'd been nice to just kill him off and be like sorry you can't be with him you can't you know he's just can't have him and then like it immediately come right back and they're like Hey, by the way, we're having a next season. We need to have Colson, and we've created him. Everybody yeah. is okay with this, right? And they're like, uh huh. Yeah. I don't know how because of the framework and all the LMDs and all of that from that one season. Like, yeah. Now it's okay to make Colson one. Well, I guess that, that I guess that was the debate afterwards. Or like, you really have to think of the ramifications. And before he finishes saying that, Daisy's like, Kush. I love how like decision. We can't make drastic decisions. Drastic decision. Yeah. <laughs> drastic decision saves the day. Crap. <laughs> I guess in a, it's just going to be Coulson because they said his memories backed up all the way into the point. They 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 pulled all their MacGuffins, yeah, you know, to bring yeah. him back, uh, which so is kind of sad because it was such a poetic send off at the end of last season. It still doesn't feel like it still doesn't mean like it wouldn't feel like him. Like, hey, yeah, I'm just a robot that has his memories. <laughs> like, it just doesn't seem like to me like, even though it's a TV show, like it doesn't feel to me like oh that's really him. You know, like I'm not. I thought I really thought they were going to save the part of Coulson that was yeah. in that monster thing because the, there was I don't know what point there was in the showing that there was a bit of him left in there yeah because even May at the end she's like when you got rid of it was there any of Colson left she's like no and the only thing I could see is maybe Izel and even uh, is it Snowflake is that her name is that the girl that Zeke was getting with yeah or Deke um, they, they all like ha- they, they all alluded to like this reincarnation thing oh like, the butterfly mm-hmm. thing yeah she's like you'll be a butterfly and then Izel kept saying like they their energy goes somewhere else they don't really ever die mm-hmm. The only thing I think is like maybe when Daisy like did the thing, like Coulson exists elsewhere because mm-hmm. of the way that whole that that's the only thing I think of because they mentioned it so yeah. many times for it to not add up to anything. Yeah, that they I, they may pull it as a MacGuffin next season. I really wanted Coulson to be like another Ghost Rider. Yeah, didn't they it allude to some crap like that like well, way back? There was a, there was a good like two episodes where they just talked about Izel and him being an entity like. Robbie Reyes. I took that as like hell is just another dimension. Mm-hmm. And so whatever dimension these guys are from isn't hell, but it's like that. Yeah. And so these beings are like like that. They're formless. That reminds me. Oh yeah, they're formless. Uh they when, inhabit other beings. When one of the priests got one of these little tiny pieces of monolith into their side of the thing, one of the holes opens up on the gate and I I, I forget uh, May is, would jumps up and she looks through the hole and you you see all these strife, but like they look humanoid, like coming yeah. towards the t- temple mm-hmm. to all go through the gate. And I thought that was a super cool little thing. Like you get to see the planet. It looks super hot. I'm glad that uh, they gave you a glimpse of what it looked like instead of just being in that temple the whole time yeah. and, and not knowing what's outside of the gate. I like that they designed the monoliths from like the get go, like whatever, a couple seasons ago yeah. to just be like the corniest <laughs> CG. So we just accept it. Yeah. Because like when it happens this season, it doesn't look wrong. It just doesn't look expensive. Also, that rock boy or the guy that Flint, looked, Flint, they don't really explain that either. <sighs> They're like, is he a thing? He's so, from that thing. Oh, he, you tell him he's fake. That's the reason I think. Like, that's what surprised me that Colson didn't survive the purging or whatever. Yeah, because they made it very clear that Flint was really him. Yeah, which is weird because like when they were fighting all that fear crap, it would just disappear. 
Mm -hmm. And then like, Oh no, he's real now. Like what? I think they just have too much of an emotional attachment to it. So he he probably isn't real, but I don't know. Like I've, but the Sarge guy was real and he was created by it. So it's kind of like, and then like being in the temple, does it like amplify the effects of the monoliths? You know, I don't know. I guess it's another thing this time, instead of it being like, just like the happenstance, this was like very purposeful. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Like you had, I guess El knows how to work. Maybe that's it. It's like a more like crafted yeah. situation. She's saying that humans couldn't do it. And like they just only bring about their fears. She's yeah. like, I sang so my yeah, song maybe. and I, all that. <laughs> I did. They did do a good job of like making the making you feel things. So when uh, Benson is like facing his fear and it's his uh, assuming spouse, yeah, it was his died stuff and was husband. like, man, that was like so gut wrenching. And we never really met that guy before. Mm-hmm. He just and, talks about him. And for them to present whoever wrote it and the guy that acted and stuff, like it was just in that like two minutes, like you felt yeah, yeah, yeah. like the the weight. Even of the temptation, you know. <laughs> yeah. Even Yo Yo and uh, the director, they were just like, we would have done the same thing. Like we understand. Yeah. yeah. I feel like this season, this next season is probably going to be done all at once. Mm-hmm. So it'll have more of like a Netflix vibe because like normally, I think prior to this season, it was like a regular TV show to where like they're making, they're making an episode maybe a few weeks out from when you're seeing yeah. it. Which is wild to think about with a show like this. Yeah. Because it's so much like effects and sets and stuff. Mm-hmm. Tons. And I, I feel like that kind of writing leans toward like that CW kind of thing where like, mm-hmm. okay, let's hurry up and we got to have this happen. So let's just make them jealous and they'll have a fight and well, there's some yeah. ridiculous garbage. And so I feel like it's kind of generally been not that like mm-hmm. this show has generally been pretty good be not being that. Mm-hmm. So I'm excited to kind of see like this, this <laughs> final season. Me too. You know, uh, like very curious mm-hmm. uh, to see what the New York, what year that was mm. at the end there when they flew in. Well, I think like, that, they say it was like 1940 or something. Oh, they did? They said no. someday. Oh, it was, was, it was like in the future, though, I thought. It was, no, in, the it was in the past. It was in the past? Really? It was in the past because wow. the Chrysler building was just being made. And that's why they didn't care about the place, the uh, thing being, helicarrying being uh, cloaked because oh. nobody could see it. I thought that was the Eiffel Tower, or the, not the Eiffel Tower, the, the Empire, State, uh, Empire building. State Building is what she kept saying. I thought it was the Chrysler Building. Oh, you know what? That makes more sense. Well, they, they said the Empire State Building in the thing, okay. but well, like... Maybe she um, was mistaken. And Well, now it makes more sense, though, because they're saying, why is the, the only one above the clouds? Yeah. Like, it's mm-hmm. the tallest building. That makes more sense. Oh, that maybe okay, it was I just... I didn't gather that. Being... I need to watch it again. Funny word, erected. <laughs> <laughs> But uh, yeah, that, it's just wild. Like, because they literally left you off with this. Like, actually, it felt a lot like Fringe. Did you ever watch Fringe? Yeah. Nope. It did. Oh, you like would love Fringe. Fringe. Holy moly. I love that show. I wish I could erase my brain and watch it all over again because it was <laughs> yeah. so much fun. It was like, this is, is going to be a really um, controversial thing to say because I know people love X Files, but it really felt like an improvement on X Files because uh, the whole thing is like super tied together, even though there's individual episodes. Yeah. Um, and you just get to really care about all these characters. And it also made me want to try LSD. <laughs> it's one of, yeah, it was like my favorite TV show. It presents all these situations that are emotional, but also would only happen in a sci-fi series, you know, <laughs> like alternate dimensions and stuff like that. Like, yeah. you know, like you have like a character Drugs. in one dimension and then uh, a character in, in, in opposite dimension, they're like in love and stuff. And it sounds cheesy to say on, you know, speaking or on paper, but like when you watch it, you're like, oh my God. I feel it, you know. Like, <laughs> no, it's super deep, and I, I, that's I. I like any show or movie that has a ton of heart written into, written into it. Mm-hmm. I want to have those gut wrenching feelings when I'm watching a show. I want to really care about uh, the characters and everything. So to to not get those types of things is like a, this is shows probably going to be suck you know yeah and i definitely get that from shield because shield agents of shield is basically like soap opera sci-fi soap mm-hmm. opera mm-hmm. i'm watching it, i'm like oh no yeah they're not <laughs> together anymore yo-yo yeah, like, and mac will never be a thing they're daisy's together crying. now yeah daisy's sad <laughs> she was cr- because fitz and simon and then benson's partner's <laughs> back came back from the dead temporarily from an image <laughs> thing it's definitely a soap opera i can't like, make, i can't i can't make fun of my mom for watching like reeling the restless when i was like yeah. little because like i'm totally <laughs> watching children Superheroes i'm watching just super or just so yeah, but really this one are. especially like yeah. I mean the other ones I could be like oh they're battling this one there's a little bit of fighting but it's a lot of drama it just makes yeah. it makes it better yeah for, it makes it more okay when they, there's fighting and uh, <laughs> superheroes I'm alright with this <laughs> That's right. <laughs> I love when like she first kisses that one dude, and I'm like, "Oh, that dude's gonna die." Oh, <laughs> it's yeah, like yeah. an episode later, like he dies. Yeah, yeah. it's like, well, like Yo Yo's in love with Yo. Well, any of the main cast being in love with anybody is not part of the main cast. Yeah. Like, oh, that's too bad for them. They're the red shirts here. Mm. Oh, that was another thing. Is Yo Yo 
one of the strife went into her mouth. Yeah, at the mm-hmm. end. And it and, just turns to goo. Like yeah, it, once Izel was slain by May. I didn't really like this ending so much as like the other seasons had great twists for endings. And that was like their their kind of twist. I feel like they're like all these things are converging. They're like, who is going to die? Mm-hmm. Like just every episode, every ending episode is kind of like who's going to die. Like yeah. last year it was like, hey, we win. And then the ceiling crashes on Fitz and he dies. Yeah. You know, it's just kind of. Like they're like, hey, guess what? Yo-Yo is going to die or May is going to die or, you know, Coulson yeah. dude's going to die or, you know, just keeps going. <laughs> the Deke. twist this season was there's no twist. Exactly. Well, actually, it was Deke that- won it for me, though, the, through this entire last season, whatever. Mm. Deke won it for me. I liked him the best. <laughs> Really, I, it, I, it just, just, I so did, I me. so did not like him all <laughs> season. It was because of how n- freaking annoying he was. But like seeing him run around with the jump drive, like when they got that, that was fun. off. I did like his. Th- so that's the part that they they made you relate with him because he's just like nobody likes me Ka-chink! like mm-hmm. like okay yeah we've all been there just jumped in but see now i wonder because of what happened with Fitz and Simmons does Deke exist anymore cuz we didn't see him and ever since like Gemma showed up we didn't see him at all after that point yeah, they'll probably bring him in at some p- specific point like but they've all they've obviously when they stepped in to the <clears throat> helicarrier or not the helicarrier what is it Zephyr one after this whole ordeal time has something has happened with time yeah, yeah. so like maybe he's along the way something happened and he's yeah. taking care of something else who knows i did like that uh deke was like it proves or that they're together proves the multiverse and all that or, not, or what did he say yeah because yeah, Fitz yeah, yeah, is yeah. from another yeah. timeline but no so the reason i was wondering about deke is like does he exist anymore because Fitz and simmons don't seem like they're together at that point yeah but it doesn't matter the other that Fitz died Mm-hmm. And this one's from like a different, a different multiverse versus or, I mean, a timeline or whatever. You know what? I just finally had a realization. They started with that timeline, and mm-hmm. then after Endgame got written, mm-hmm. they had a backpedal on it, and that's when Deke was like, "My theory on multiverse works." It's like one of the writers is like, "How do we backpedal this?" Because <laughs> the whole thing was about like that one season was all about the ramifications of the past yeah. affecting the future. Yeah, that's how they like tied it back into the movies loosely. Yeah, I don't even cool. know if they know anymore. <laughs> There's well, like it doesn't matter. Just keep going. Yeah, no, I say I think I think this is still tied to the movie universe because they're ending it. Yeah, because they real. Yeah. I just read this article somewhere that was like this should have ended a while ago because it was part of Phase One. Yeah, and nothing from Phase One has carried this long. Yeah, so they're probably like we can't we can't keep doing this. Like, <laughs> come on, guys. Yeah, <laughs> I mean, what is this like season nine? It'll be, it'll be seven. Yeah. The final season. Holy crap. I mean, it's not that many seasons, to be honest. I mean, you got some other, you know, shows that go like, what, 15? <laughs> I guess the only thing is like the last three or two or three seasons mm. have been split up to like basically two seasons. Yeah. They started splitting up the seasons into two or three phases kind of. Yeah. Feel. So the first phase was the Ghost Rider thing, and then they moved on to the framework thing, and then and the Ghost Rider comes back at the end of that yeah. to kill but, her because she's, you know. But it just felt like two completely different seasons, you mm-hmm. know? Like, mm-hmm. that's probably why it felt longer. I it wanted feel Agent longer. Carter to come back, man. Yeah. That's true. I wanted to know the rest of that, like Zero Matter or whatever it was. They might bring her back for this, That'd for this cool. last season, it, at least for an episode. This or, uh, I mean, there's always a chance in WandaVision. They got the time yeah. period, right? You know. And well, she's definitely going to be back in the What If thing, at least for voice yeah. cast. So. But I, I guess maybe What If will probably be the only thing, because I did remember seeing uh, a thing with Haley Atwell. She, in her interview, she said that like her, like, contributions to the MCU are only ever like one day every three years. Mm-hmm. She comes in for a few hours to do something. Yeah. This is true. Like you think about it, you're like, oh yeah, she, she's like dying in one. She's in like two scenes in one movie. She's in the one dancing scene in this one. I think she said she filmed that dancing scene with Chris Evans like three years ago. Or oh, something like, or not two years ago, or something, something like way, like long as she's like, she just didn't even know what movie it was going to really contribute to. Right. Mm-hmm. And stuff, or maybe she did, but it was like, it, she'd forgotten it by the time she'd moved on to three other movies. Well, she's then. in the middle of the movie too. Like when they go back in time to pick up more. Yeah. But, yeah. but then once again, she said all that stuff can happen in like a few hours. And yeah, one that's afternoon true. For I mean, her. it's not very much in there that's involved her. Yeah. And then she said with the what if thing, she like showed up to a, like a, a recording studio for like an afternoon. Mm-hmm. And that was her contribution for the entire season. Yeah. Well, I mean, when I was doing Disney stuff, they'd record a song for like, I don't know. It's kind of something like Hannah, Hannah Montana. It wasn't Hannah Montana, but it'd be like for one of those shows during that period of time, they would record a song that they're going to play on that show. And then they would do uh, a video like a behind the scenes for like something that's some movie is coming out. And this is because it's the same actress. And then I think in the case of like an Ashley Tisdale thing, like she was there and then she was voicing. They're like, Oh, by the way, within like three hours, she did three different things. The last thing she did was she did voicing for like Candace on the Phineas and Burb. Oh. So like she would do that. 
Yeah. And it's just weird, like how yes. much they cram into that crap. Like, holy crap. I guess that's kind of cool, though, because then they can like really make it her time efficient, too. That's true. I mean, like, yeah, they don't have to have her all over the place then. Yeah. Wasn't that the one with the platypus? Yep. Yeah. Perry the platypus. Yeah. That's one of my favorite shows. I love that show so much. I feel like that show is one of the only like cartoon shows to like rise to the occasion of like DuckTales. Yeah, because like, he, oh, okay, he was a freaking like superhero. No, uh, Phineas and Ferb. Phineas and Ferb. Oh, yeah. I never watched any of those shows, but I was also like... I think I, you'd love Phineas and Ferb. Yeah. He was like a super secret agent. The, I think the platypus. The, when was that? Was that early, mid-2000s? Yeah, it probably was around 2010 that it started. Oh, that's and probably And it only why. ended in probably about 2016. Gotcha. Yeah, I'm like... I haven't watched any like kid shows. Mm-hmm. It was great though. There was so much <clears throat> stuff going on in that show. It was, was just great. so many like funny like things coming back over and over again. Like I used to watch hilarious. it with uh, Hunter all the time, or not Hunter Carter, my uh, nephew. Oh, <laughs> like speaking you guys of, know. Who, speaking who of kids stuff, about. so Vince and I went to go see Dora the Explorer. Oh, yeah. I know you said it was. Boring. I saw it already. Yeah. Uh, Dora Vince was and I, awesome. Vince and I were in. <laughs> Slightly altered mental states, but <laughs> which that, might have made that, it better. That well, they did. And that being said, I thought it was hilarious. I don't think it's a masterpiece. I don't think you should pay full price to see it unless you have kids. But we have a list, and it was very worthy of that. I, I, the thing I appreciate the most about it was the entire movie was so aware of itself. Yeah, like I, I love like well, the, they show in the trailer like her talking at camera when she's a kid, and the dad be like, I guess she'll get over it, you know, but. <laughs> my like the first moment that I like laughed uncontrollably and then everybody else did too. Cause normally I'm the only one, but everybody else in the theater did too was uh, when the, the, well, she starts off as like the bully and she's like, you know, what they say is nothing's more dangerous than a wounded animal. And then Dora's still like super naive. And she's, she's like, actually there's a lot of things more dangerous than a wounded animal for starters, a non wounded animal. <laughs> and like, I just lost it. I was like, I already like this. And then uh, I do like that. It started off. Like as Adora, you know, with like the talking map. He's like, I'm a map that talks. You yeah. know? I'm a backpack. Uh, yeah. I'm mappy. And then it like kind of zooms out. And it's just a kid's imagination. I'm like, that's a really good way to present that. Mm-hmm. You know, like why the show exists is because it's like all in the mind of like a toddler. Yeah. It's funny though, because she has the monkey for real. Yeah. Oops. But the cousin doesn't have the tiger for real. <laughs> and, oh yeah, the jaguar. But I also yeah, the like jaguar. how they, <laughs> why, I, I kind of like how they <laughs> never explain why Boots talks randomly as Danny Trejo wants. <laughs> no. But he gets like in the movie, he looks like the, he gets possessed by Danny Trejo. Something, yeah. yeah. And, and the then he is, comes back and he's like boots again. It it just seems like he's actually listening, like the way they animated oh, him, yeah. you know, like his, sure. eye, his eyes and stuff. He looks super cute. I looking think he stuff. D- does understand. And so he's like, okay. And then Dora's just like, I'm talking. It's like when you talk to a dog, you're like, you know, the dog doesn't understand. It's yeah. like, it's like, it's like a uh, Sam's little helper in the Simpsons. Like, yeah. Rawr, 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 sit. We're really like, like one, you know, <laughs> patterns and stuff. But like, you feel like Boots is like, uh-huh, uh-huh, because he's a monkey. He's like waiting for him, her to give him a banana or something like that. That was funny. And that then day. all of a sudden, he's like, you're going through a very tough time in life. It's like, <laughs> <laughs> I remember reading that he was going to voice Boots and then just watching the movie and being like, well, I guess he doesn't talk. That's really weird. And then like that breakdown. Yeah. It's like, oh, yep, there he there is. And is. then that swiper from the beginning is just the only like uh, anthropomorphic fox or animal mm-hmm. in the entire show. And... This is Benicio del Toro. Yeah. The voice. And then the once again the bully was like, why? Is anybody not acknowledging that there's like one fox wearing like a like a burglar mask? And also, why does a fox need to be like anonymous amongst all the other foxes <laughs> in the jungle? And I was like, Yeah, because like it's the only like not real element in this whole thing. Yeah, the, it was actually not real the entire time. Standing up <laughs> talking, part of the group of the bad guys. <laughs> Like that was the only funny part that I actually laughed at. Like he's he's like I'm standing guard. Yeah, yeah, I'm yeah, standing. yeah. And I'm like, just shut up. Just shut up. <laughs> like, like, That's right. It's so funny. Like I, it just doesn't make any sense. And I really feel like the rest of the movie, if they had gone like above and beyond like that with the rest of the movie, I would have laughed a lot more. Like they tried to ground it, but not ground it, and then do this thing, and like I'm like it just jumped back yeah. and forth too much. And I don't know. That was funny that you went to go see that movie because I was like. I've been looking at these movies and I think there's some new movies that just came out. Like we went to, mm. I went to go see Rambo oh my God. and, uh, and some other stuff. So I was like, all right, fine. There's some new stuff coming out. But like for a while I was like, man, this, this is kind of, there's not a lot to see. <laughs> so there was uh like, we had just finished this big project. Um, and so we had like a couple days that were going to be a little bit more free than we normally have. And then like, it was like Vince, we should go see some movies because we never have time to see them. We have this thing. Yeah. So Vince like made a list. I don't usually don't care. There's a couple tent poles I want to see, but I'm like for movies I don't know, I don't, I don't really care. So he made like a list of like three or four movies. And then Dora was like third or fourth on the list. 
And I think the only one we haven't seen on that list yet is the Goldfinch. Yeah. But we saw everything else like Ready or Not, um, Rambo, mm -hmm. and uh, Dora. And Dora, like, I think we were on the West side because if some people don't know, like, we host a live stream in Santa Monica on Mob Crush on Fridays. And if you know LA traffic, it doesn't make any sense for us to like drive back to the East side on during rush hour. So we usually just stay there, use our list and see a movie. So we saw a door and like, yep. But Rambo. Rambo. So we talked about Holy our live stream crap. last night and Josh was in the chat, yeah. but like, <laughs> well, first off, I'm like so surprised <clears throat> that you got Angie to watch both. I don't know first how blood and last blood. We Did watched first blood first though. And I didn't see the last Rambo movie and I didn't know like, cause like apparently the last one is also very bloody and gratuitous. Um, and so we watched first blood and it's got a nice little story and, and, and it's kind of like, Oh, that's it's touching. One, you know, was that the one where he came back to town and the cop was being a dick? Yeah, it's a cop just being a okay. jerk. And so he's like, he's, basically he gets kind of driven crazy and they try to kill him a bunch of times. And so he's basically like, guess what? You drew first blood. Now I'm coming after you. And, uh, it's, it's great. It, he doesn't kill anybody, by the way. Like one guy dies, and it's not even his fault. It's the guy's fault that was shooting at him that dies. It is interesting. I just watched um, Cinemasker does the rental reviews. Yeah, and they I misread it. I thought they were doing a Last Blood review, but I, it was First, it was first blood. blood. Yeah, and they all made the comment. It was like the first movie, which a was it came out the year I was born, which mm -hmm. is wild to think about. But I guess it was an actual like movie that like someone wrote a good script to. Yeah, and then. Is like Rambo two. All of a sudden, like Michael Bay took over. Yep, exactly. <laughs> Second one and the third one's exactly the same. I mean, yeah. it's just, ever since then, oh, what the, you think of as a Rambo movie is from the second one on. Yeah. yeah, but the first one is like its own thing. I feel like Rocky's the same way. Everybody thinks of Rocky as Rocky four. While that's a fun one, yeah, it's not like it doesn't have the fun, the, like the really good heart story of like the first one. Yeah, oh, and like yeah. it's it's very fun. Well, which one? I forget which which Rocky it was. It might have been five or six or whatever. The, the one that where he's trained in a, a street fighter. That's the fifth one. It's the one he hates the most. Yeah. To be honest, it's not very good. No, I, that's the worst one at all. Of them, yeah. I feel like. So did <clears throat> Angie actually watch Last Blood yeah, or did she like thing. turn around? Um, I mean, she was closing <laughs> yeah, her eyes a couple times. Because, I was looking away a ton of times too. Yeah. Because it was like, brutal. Because <laughs> I said this on the live stream last night. <laughs> it was literally like if if like Home Alone existed in the Mortal Kombat universe. <laughs> yep. Because... <laughs> because a it's straight i mean okay spoiler warning again we're just gonna talk about the movie um it it is literally the third act just turns into home alone yeah and she actually leaned over and it's like it's like home alone she yeah it's straight to alone, me which yeah. is funny because corridor digital like a week or two before mm. did what if home alone were rated r and they did redid the special effects oh nice and it's not too far off and then when i say mortal Kombat, it's not just because of the violence it's because of the logic behind the violence mm -hmm. like doesn't make sense in the real world it's just cool on screen, and it's the kind of thing you'd see in a Mortal Kombat fatality. Mm. Like, there's this one scene in that third act where, like, I don't know, like a rake or something comes across this guy's face, mm -hmm. and the way it cuts it into like sections yep. is something that only happened to like Baraka at Mortal Kombat exactly. or something. Like, yeah. Because everybody else just like kind of explodes, like you kind of like expect them to and stuff. Most of it's pr practical, but that part, yeah, you're like, yeah, wait like, a minute. And then they <laughs> linger. All the puncture things. Yeah. Things were like flying down from the ceiling, like <laughs> yeah. puncturing people in the chest. And, the, and then they like look the way the face looked when it split, which is like they just lingered on it. And yeah. Like, the one dude, he he pushed a pole through this dude's head <laughs> and then chopped his foot off. Yeah, <laughs> it was great. The the, the 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 rake thing though reminds me of. Do you, you ever see uh, the very first uh, Resident Evil? Yeah, where like they're trying to go oh. through this like laser thing, <laughs> yeah, it and it like turns into like a laser grid, and it just basically like cubes a guy. Yeah, and turns him into cubes, I, and it's like he still stands there for a second, then he slowly falls apart. It's like no, if that would have happened, they just would have been like. Bleh. Yeah, but you know what <laughs> I loved about that scene that I wish would have been kind of like what they did in Rambo is in, in Resident Evil you don't ever actually see the guy it zooms into like Mila Jovich's face and you and see, the, refle see, her, you see yeah. the reflection in the window so you see the cubes fall apart in a reflection yeah, yeah and that to cool. me that was like way more effective than actually just seeing the and thing and everything a lot happening. cheaper yeah <laughs> but well it's just kind of like that thing where like you know signs was cool until you saw the aliens yeah you know, exactly. kind of thing like you just see like these remnants and her reaction and the reflection is it was more effective. But it's right. funny thing about that is that grid thing is in Mortal Kombat right now. Like oh, yeah. one of the modifiers. So like people <laughs> joke about it. That you're fighting and there's like weird laser grid things happening. Like, come on. Like yeah. how do how do I how do I beat how this? How do I get away with this? But then there was that they even made like a pit spike. Yeah. Uh, yes. pit spike. spike pit. Spike yep. pit. Spike pit. Why did I lose that? Spike a, pit. A pit and, spike. But 
when they fell, it's a completely different thing, but it still is a thing. I'll have to rewatch, but I'm 90% sure when I saw it that the way the guys fell, like some part of them was on each spike. Yeah. Like they didn't miss one. It was like their body (laughs) shape had like hit in the exact like way that the spikes were like aligned and stuff. I was like, that was convenient. And he still shot them. Yeah. The, the the crazy part is we're just talking about the the, the third, third act. The third act, yeah. Like so for the first like half, you know half of the movie it was just like on like a nice cruising pace, you know. He goes there, he tries mm. to get the girl back. Uh he gets his butt whooped, you know. The girl uh Paz Vega saves him, <laughs> pulls him to the house like, you know, everything's going smooth, but then all of a sudden it just goes from like 50 to like 100 right yes. away yeah dude and he, when he goes well, it's back funny to though, like, like, interrogate that dude but oh, next to the truck that was the most disgusting <laughs> thing i've gross. ever seen but it was effective very that's actually i didn't realize like i said like this this movie was going to be so gruesome i feel like it's a very big it's probably from the last the last movie too a very big departure from the first one like the only i guess like it's the first some of the things that like they stopped the people because he does like do the spike thing you know he like yeah he has like the the sharpened sticks or whatever and yeah. it comes around he does the spike thing to some gu- some guys and their their legs and stuff oh like, yeah he, like the- and he stabs them a couple times in the legs to basically stop them basically yeah. and he basically like held a knife to the other dude's throat saying like i could have killed all of you leave me alone right. and they just keep coming after him and so that's kind of what drives him crazy and he still doesn't kill anybody he wants to at the end, but the sergeant comes in and was like, you were going to, you know, you can't win this one. Yeah. Well, the thing of the setup, though, with, uh, what was her name? Gabriella mm-hmm. um, was so sad. I think actually the one thing I did not expect besides the violence was for her to die. I thought the whole point of the movie was going to be to save her. He saves his, his, yeah. his faux daughter. And then, and and then she when she dies, when she dies which was like. You know what? At least they went for like that is probably kind of what would happen if someone was like, so if someone was like being drugged on an hourly basis yeah. for like days, like four or five days and stuff. There's no like, like remedy for that, yeah, like, yeah. Uh, or quick fix. So <laughs> like, why didn't you stop and get some Narcan? Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> but I, I guess like adrenaline, maybe I don't know. When by the time the third Epinephrine. act hit, I was like, oh, they did all that because. They, they're trying to find a way to justify that, that amount of violence. Mm-hmm. The people, and they're like, oh, we can all agree we hate sex trafficking, right? Okay. <laughs> <Yeah>. Like, <laughs> did you see all the people, though, that like, there's a, there's actually quite a few of like these these journalists or whatever that were reviewing the movie. They're like, oh no, they've turned Rambo into a mega blah, 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 because he hates, it's, it's all because like, it's oh, all Mexican because he goes thing. to Mexico. Like, oh. like, oh, it's terrible. It's like, yeah, but it happens. Like, it, they have like a well, very big sex trade. Not, not only does <laughs> like, it happen, he he doesn't hate them. His yeah. own daughter is Hispanic. Well, it's like a adopted, well, his adopted daughter. daughter but, yeah, but he called you know it's, it's the same effectively. Like and exactly, his, who was the lady? Was it just a friend or was that his claim? Was like well, kind what of I life read partner. because I don't, I don't remember it in the story. I don't remember there was this happening in the story, but apparently because I watched I watched an interview with Stallone about uh-huh. the movie. I think it was on Fallon or something, and he says like, oh well, I came back after eleven years, and my parents had died, and but this the family that was kind of. T- the caretaker of my of my parents' house were still kind of living there, and uh-huh. you know, you know, basically he stepped in, and the mom had cancer, and so he he lived there and become okay. became the father figure. So she so was, she's just a friend, but she's so, like yeah, the grandmother. But he came, she became like a dot da- a daughter. Yeah, like yeah. And I didn't get any of that no, at the beginning of the movie. That was kind of played in the trailer too. So I was kind of like, oh, where's all this story coming from? You know. So he was like, he's the just the you know. He's not even related. Lineage of family now owns his family's house. Yeah, and then the the, the people that lived there prior. Yeah. with his family. They're the caretakers. Okay. We're kind so of that makes sense. Yeah. So that, that brings up a couple other points. I thought was funny when I left the movie. So I was like, a that first shot at the um the breakfast table when they do a close up on his face is yeah. like, oh, uh, that's a face not meant for HD. <laughs> like it, it yeah. was like you're like landing on the moon. It was it was like whoa. I mean, Stallone's like you know, good on him. He's like 60 something or whatever, mm-hmm. but like it just, I, it, it, it just still disturbing. To see like such like a leathery, like, you know, I wasn't texture. ready for he's that. He's old yet. though. I mean, like yeah. I, I love the dude so much. He's getting up there, but he's still doing this stuff. Yeah. He even talked about doing another expendables. Um, yeah, but then, I mean, and he's still in great shape. Yeah. But, but then the, uh, the whole like ending where he gets, did he die at the end? Was that the implication? I, I'm so confused. I don't know. Because like, they left it up to you, I think. They kind of le- like, they, see, he's like holding a gunshot wound with his hand mm-hmm. and not another, the other one. Another gunshot wound then, to the chest. And then yeah. he like, he like sits in the rocking chair and I fully expected them to show, because they showed like the bottom of the rocking chair. I, I fully stop. expected them for it to stop. Yeah. 
But then he goes into this monologue about how he has to stay alive for their memory. Yeah. I'm like, fuck, are you dying or not? Like, <laughs> yeah. And then, then he's like, he's like, there's nothing left. Everyone I cared about is dead. I'm like, what about Abulita? Like, she, yeah. like, she's like, fuck me, man. You know, like, yeah. like what? Nah, she's Abby, like, what? go live with your sister. <laughs> 20 years as the first movie was the same way though. Like he had nobody. And so he was going around to, to see his last living friend from his original, like uh green beret crew. Mm-hmm. And the guy had already died from like agent orange or something. Uh, uh, and so he gets there and the guy's dad, he's like, he's got nothing left. And so it's like, wait a minute, how many times has he had nothing, nothing left? left. <laughs> and then the, uh, whole like, um, end credits isn't really like an end credits thing. It's like a montage yeah. of like, Rambo's history, which was nice, except for the fact that I felt like this movie had nothing to do with Rambo's history. Yeah, I felt like it was a different movie. To be honest, if, it, if they would have just named him a different dude, it yeah. could have been a completely different movie. They and I would have not John even questioned Wick. it. You could have just told me it was Rocky. And I'd have been like, <laughs> sure. Sure. I mean, to be honest, it makes that much sense. I mean, <clears throat> I mean, it kind of felt like a money grab for Rambo. Like maybe, maybe it was like somebody came to him with a, with a, you know, the next movie script. Yeah. And they were like, eh, why not? Guess what? You get to beat up some dudes that were Dude, like, you know, yeah. dude had a sex this, ring or whatever. When, like, we, when yes. we left, Vince was like hour and a half. Cause I was like, hour and a half seems kind of short for an action movie, especially the finale of like mm-hmm. a legendary franchise. And then Vince was like, hour and a half is about as much as Sloan's acting. I could take. I'm like, <laughs> That's true. Oh, that's sad. I love because, Stallone. I mean, I, I mean, love him too, but like, there's only so much I want to hear his voice. Like 90% of it was fine, but then there were some lines where like, you wrote that for yourself, didn't you? Because like when he's in the truck after uh, Gabriella dies mm-hmm. and he puts his head on the steering wheel, he's like, why not me? I'm like, yeah. is that a serious line? There were some like Keanu Reeves moments, yeah. acting moments in there. Dude, there's some bad bad angles like bad camera footage and stuff yeah. and I look there's some parts where like she's turning in the car or something and that's I'm like, what my gripe was, <laughs> I was actually. Like, oh my gosh who who that was the whole, PA? anytime she was in her little honda driving yeah. around those were <laughs> very poorly put together they're like a helicopter scene of like going around the house with the with the aunt or whatever sitting on the front front porch it just looked very uh like pseudo youtube yeah oh, like, i don't know well, uh, during the montage no, no, like there was, was in the a part movie. where she was sitting there waiting and it kept like zooming in and, yeah. like, and no, spinning no, around her or say, whatever. Cause like he, cause he's like, uh, in Mexico and she's waiting on the porch. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. They were yeah, doing this yeah. like montage thing and it was like, dun, 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 uh, dun, dun, like yeah. and, and, and it was like, man, this is so funny. This, this is like what a parody of this kind of movie, <laughs> like that montage bit. scene, like four days pass. Cause he's like on the bed, like recovering and stuff. Mm-hmm. So is this Rambo, like the one punch man of Rambo movies? <laughs> Cause it's know. like, they throw every cliche in there, but the, then Stallone's voice, which once again, I get, you know, he's supposed to be like the most like testosterone fueled, like, you know, whatever. But when it asks Gabri- that whole monologue he gives as Gabrielle is dying in the truck, mm-hmm. I needed subtitles. I don't understand a word he said in that section because he, he he just descended into like more of a parody of himself. He's like, Gabriella, did you know that oh, family, family? And I was like, what the fuck is he saying? <laughs> Yeah. Uh, and uh, we were in a theater with Dolby Atmos. Like I couldn't understand what he was. Have saying. you ever seen First Blood? Like the very first one? Long time. Yeah, I mean, okay. once again, it came out when I was ago. born. I actually like I, I watched it with Angie again the other mm-hmm. day, and right before we saw the second one, there's a very end part of the movie that like he starts talking to the sergeant who's trying to talk him down about all this crap that's happened to him. He goes through like, you know, one of my last friends, you know, this this little kid had a you know thing, I'll sh- shine your shoes or whatever. And like he, he starts just like crying while he's talking. You can't understand all like, kind of what he's saying because he's mumbling through it. Mm-hmm. But like you get, you get where he really means it. And it's just yeah. kind of weird. Like the acting actually worked with how like he was getting upset with his grumbly voice and mm-hmm. he just gets, starts and you understand it a little bit, but yeah, like when, when he's talking in this new one, he just kind of gets <laughs> like, that oh, vocal okay. fry. Yeah. I, I could, yeah. I didn't know if it was like stroke related or if, <laughs> if he'd been like, you know, Botox. Cause he just like, always talks really gravelly. No, it's just, it's just like a point of his face where just there's, it stops actually oh, yeah, yeah. moving. I do think though, it's, it's half like whoever did like audio for it. And then like really focusing on that, like low end, but mm-hmm. also his voice, man, it's just, he's, he's so fried like his vocal cords, you know? And stuff. Yeah. yeah. It's just, it's just like oh. they could have done like did like Vin Diesel and I should replace like every effing line and like that uh, was it that uh, uh, Riddick, oh pitch Riddick. black pitch black yes Riddick yeah. and Riddick. it's the same thing Riddick they're Dude. doing another one of those by the way but like I, Chronicles I, of Riddick I Chronicles love, of Riddick I love those movies he did he redid or at least it sounds like he redid everything like because the microphone is like right on his <laughs> and like the microphones can't do that if they're yeah. up in the air over your head you have got to have the proximity effect of that yeah. like radio voice. No, yeah, I know, just, right? I hate knowing that most most stuff is like 
uh, overdubbed because mm-hmm. because now it, it affects my viewing pleasure yeah because <laughs> i can i can see it and hear it sometimes worse yeah those cuts off. made me like kind of pull out for a while and i was like oh <laughs> but i had a, such a great time and it like i just it, was fun. it so, i didn't even like let the other things bother me the thing though that i was like i, I didn't feel like i got resolve on that I was like, this was pointless to bring up. Was when he went back to Mexico, mm. and um, I can't even remember her name. The journalist, yeah, um, was like, yeah. "Why did you come here?" I'm so. Then she made a big deal about him coming back, and he was like, "You got to help me." She's like, "I can't," and I, and I was expecting her to be on the mission with him, yeah, and stuff because she made this whole stink about how she can't, you know, continue to help him and stuff. And then all she had to do was tell him where she thought the yeah. bad guys might be, and then you never saw her again. <laughs> Not even at the ending. And no. I'm like. Nope. Why? I mean, that literally should have just been like, where are they? And she's like, over there. And then like, done. How many times did he go to Mexico, by the way? Because I feel like, I feel like there was that giant montage when he was making the stuff and then uh-huh. he goes to Mexico and then they have another montage of him waiting. I feel like it's, it, what was something I you said? It was, it was very twice, like a, like a, a slap in the face to Trump too, because of how many times they crossed the border. Oh, yeah. the border. <laughs> well, yeah. Cause like, he did, and he just drove over the wall yeah, with yeah. the truck. <laughs> he just keeps or going. Or like went under in tunnels or something yeah, like that. Like, right. Well, it's funny because when we left the movie, Vince was like, "Why did she, why did they like drive through the thing?" It's like because she had a dead he had a dead woman in his car. Yeah. Like the border patrol would be like, "Just pass, yeah, you're fine, you're coming back." Also, in. she's like all drugged out. Yeah, <laughs> no paper. <laughs> Is she white? No. Yeah. Okay, good. <laughs> I love like at the beginning of the movie, like he's like down in those uh, tunnels or whatever yeah. around the house, and like, like oh, I, I don't know, I don't know if I want to let you in the tunnels. It's like oh, there's tunnels. That's where the end movie is gonna be. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> like, all, it was all set up. It's almost like you could see the next five minutes. Like mm-hmm. every five minutes, you're like, I know where this is going. They kept I know where this is going. It. Yeah, because first it's like oh, you don't let you didn't never let me and my friends co- go in the tunnel with mm-hmm. she's Gabriella. And then the abuela, the old grandmother, she's like, you never let me in the tunnels either. <laughs> yeah. But then he was like, do you want to go? She's like, no, no I don't want to do that. <laughs> it's, it's dirty. But see, then that was a weird thing too, because like, you never let me down there. And he's like, did you draw this when I was five? Like you were down there. <laughs> it's true. <laughs> also, so con- that was, also, that was confusing fun. Dude, that was also like a weird mixed Explosive. message thing. Maybe it was supposed to show like how a teenage boy is a teenage boy because mm-hmm. he's like, cool, you draw that. She's like, yeah, when I was five. And he's like, cool, let me stick it in. They're like, is that <laughs> the know. first thing you think of? I know. Wow. That was <laughs> like super forced and awkward and ew, made me feel super grimy. And I, I love uh, how when he goes back as a Gisela, he's like, he's like, you sold her out. And then he, she takes him to the club and she's like, we cool. He's like, fuck you. Yeah. And, fuck and, off. And I was like, I get that. But also like, I feel like the, the, the consequences should have been much harsher. Yes. He pulled that dude's collarbone out. Yeah, well, she she was the reason she was in the, f- the whole thing in the first exactly. place. Like all the other guys are scummy because they run a sex ring. Yeah, but this girl was responsible for the person. Like this is the whole she, reason she, she got, knew yeah. that that's what she was going to go exactly. through and still sold yeah. her out. You know, that acting was a little. Oh, that was, that was <laughs> well, for Gisella. Of course. Yeah, but to, to her credit. <laughs> That's how that kind of chick acts. Like so. Uh, yeah, I mean, she did nail the uh, <laughs> fluidity of it. Oh gosh. But um, I'm not saying of, anything. Speaking of the 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 collarbone thing, so that's the moment that this movie went from like zero to hundred, yeah, like in a second, super fast. Because it was like I thought initially he had just like you know pushed his thumb into like cause pain or like break a bone or something like that, mm-hmm. and then when he digs the collarbone out, yes. I get. I haven't gagged in a movie. Oh. I play Mortal Kombat every day, and I have not. <laughs> well, gagged. you know that's not real. That looked very real. Yeah, but even it was well, pretty I mean, real. some of the MK stuff, like is once again, it's like more Mortal Kombat like logic, you know, yeah. stuff. The way they did, it was like, it was just so gross because it was so slow mm-hmm. and like, and well, you could, and he was he, screaming the entire time. And the idea of him digging it out, yeah, it was totally a slasher film because they showed all the cuts, like they yeah. showed his face get cut open, yeah, and they didn't go away you see the flaps yeah. of skin open up and then the cut the dude and the stuff i forget there's a bunch of other things <laughs> and then I, we were talking about this after the movie we went, getting chopped. we went to with their friend billy and we were talking to him about like i like how when the guy like finally brought him over he like he just like punched him knocked him out yeah. and they're like he just left him in the truck so you imagine the guy can you imagine waking up and he's like oh my god i was all dream looking down and your collarbone sticking oh. out and you just pass out again yeah, yeah. and there's just a cycle of you passing out <laughs> until you die, die yeah like, <laughs> It's like, it's like, oh my god! Like so excruciating, it was so gruesome. Keep, ugh. Yeah. <laughs> the hammer was crazy too. Dude, oh, that was so satisfying. Wicked. though. 
People were cheering at the screening. We were yeah, at. we were. Everyone was like so happy. I was I was screaming too. I loved I loved that part just going on like as much as we're making fun of like the whole like uh, cheesy sex trafficking kind of like mm-hmm. excuse or whatever and stuff. It did set up this circumstance where like literally anyone in this house is like should be dead. Like mm-hmm. there's no like innocent people. And he's trying to get the girls out and they're like, no, no I'm not leaving. Kill. They're coming. <laughs> Which I get to see because they're like, just because you kill that one dude doesn't mean 40 other people outside aren't going to come after exactly. me and stuff. They're pretty much thinking they're already dead anyway, right? Like yeah. mm-hmm. they're just going to like OD at some point. But like, the, yeah, it was wild to like just see him like swing that hammer around and stuff. And you're like, you were like, every single person here deserves this. You're mm-hmm. seeing like, heads pop like balloons yeah. with oh, that gosh. freaking hammer. The, the sound design was the on sound point. Design, I was, was going to say, it <laughs> made it too, man. <laughs> Just God. every time he'd kill someone, it was like a cheer. Like, <laughs> so go see Rambo three Dude, or four, what is it? When, if you don't have a queasy five, stomach, when he <laughs> when he um last blood uh dropped that guy's head on the highway. That oh was another yeah, point. everyone cheered <laughs> and stuff. And then uh, at the end, and spoiler again, I guess we got this far. Um, <laughs> when he cuts the last the well, other brother's chest open yeah. and mm-hmm. physically pulls out his heart, yeah, like yeah. full yeah. like Raiders. It was no, Raiders. No, yeah, no, Raiders. Was it Raiders? Yeah, full like no, no, ra- no uh, um, the next one. Temple of Doom. Temple of Doom. Temple, it was full like Temple of Doom, like <laughs> Ali Ma. I, I fully expected him to take a bite, spit it back in his face, and throw it on the ground because that that's literally a Mortal Kombat like <laughs> oh yeah fatality. It reminds me of like Rambo. A, it was a Dumb and Dumber where he has that dream sequence where he's like fighting the the Chinese oh, yeah, takeout yeah. guy and oh, he sticks yeah. his hand yeah. through his heart. Whoa! Yeah, pulls puts his it in a doggy up. bag and gives it back to him. <laughs> yeah, dude. I forgot about that. I don't know if Rambo was made by a affiliate studio Warner Brothers, but like after seeing that, I don't know how Rambo didn't end up as a DLC character in MK11. Yeah, I'm telling you, man. Like moly. It would totally work out. Yeah. It was just. I mean, you got Terminator. Why not Rambo? Yeah. Uh huh. Dude, I just was not ready for the level of violence in Rambo. I knew it was going to be like <laughs> like a kind of war, not a wartime flick, but like that feeling. Yeah. It didn't feel like that at all. It just, it, that, that was like, man, dude, holy crap. But now the the tagline that you had mentioned before, the get off my lawn, yeah. or get off his lawn or whatever, makes sense. Yeah. Except for the, I, I, there's so many questions that I guess you shouldn't be asking from like a Rambo movie, but like that end, you know, it's like he's just sitting on the rocking chair. Like As the what, montage of the other movies go through. Yeah, but like, what explanation does he have when somebody shows up? Because like that whole field exploded. Yeah, like you could see the the lines collapsing and stuff. And like when it's they almost. show up and they find like a drugged out chick like buried in the backyard and like dozens of men like dead yeah. on the front lawn and he's like shot up and seeing a rock. Like, what is he going to say? I I used to be in the army. <laughs> <laughs> I give a, a, a congressional medal of honor. Yeah. Yeah. Or just, just look the other way, please. Or, yeah, or did they just like look <laughs> at his history and they're like, you know, this is this one lie, you know? Because well, it doesn't make any sense to me. Because like, if you watch the first movie, like he's all over the news. They're like, oh, yeah. this dude Rambo, blah blah blah, is shooting up the city and all this other stuff. Like they're telling like false garbage on it. But like it's it's crazy. Like why wouldn't the public like know? Like he's yeah. on it's on his driver's license, John Rambo. Like, yeah. <laughs> like oh, I'm cool. I'm just it's fine. Also, he never, all that his, crap. he never got that back by the way. Oh, the driver's license? Because <laughs> that's a big deal to me. <laughs> <laughs> oh, it sucks out. I got to go back to the DMV. I know. God start damn killing it. people there. He drove without his license, too. How? What a bad boy. Rambo. <laughs> he drove over the border. He's I like, know. oh, the fence. I'm just going to drive through it. <laughs> I love seeing the big knives, of course. Oh, yeah. That get- first knife when he hits the Oh yeah. With the, with the girl was talking to him. Was it was Giselle or whatever. It's like, mm-hmm. bam. Yeah. It's just, that was great. Yeah, was super she, visceral. Silencio, real fast. <laughs> <laughs> well, I guess go see Rambo if you don't have a queasy stomach. Actually, we were talking with a friend who's going through a lot right now. He's like, I just need a really violent, like, um, <laughs> extent, you know, like an uh, outlet. I'm like, go, go see, see Ram- Rambo. Go see Rambo then. And, and then what I, I was like, go see it, but then don't do anything about it afterward. <laughs> yeah. Well, I mean, uh, the, the hope is that you see the movie and get like kind of Appease. satisfied there. Yeah. But like, don't, like, if you're, like tempted by violent tendencies, then don't see that movie. Like, because they get so weirdly creative with the violence. <laughs> yes. Like, like I said, like MK logic, man, is just like, what? <laughs> That's pretty dope. When September 11th happened, I was just, you know, everybody was mad. You know, the whole thing was, you know, let's go back and get them kind of deal. And I was like, yeah, I want to watch a beat em up, shoot em up movie. I'm going to watch Rambo 3. <laughs> and it's really weird because the Rambo 3 is about uh, when the Soviets tried to like kind of come into Afghanistan. Yeah, <laughs> and so the U.S. kind of funded the uh, the Mahujadeen, I think is what what they call them, and <laughs> which they were like called freedom fighters at the time. And so he goes over and helps the Mahujadeen, and it's like, oh, they're freedom fighters, and blah, 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 we're working together. Guess who those guys turn out to be? 
Bin Laden. Oh, <laughs> oh damn. And so like, I just remember watching that movie and later being like, wow, that's just so <laughs> weird. I don't, I don't know how I feel about this now. I don't know if I've seen Rambo 3. I saw the fourth one, and I guess Last Blood is the fifth one. Mm. I don't I don't know if I've seen anything besides the first one when I was like really little and it was on TBS or something. Yeah. Watch the first blood. Watch the last blood. The rest of them are meh. <laughs> There's no middle blood, so. <laughs> and there's a lot of middle bloods. They're just not very good. It's just funny. I figured like last blood would be him dying. Yeah, right. I thought he was going to die like in the tunnels with those people. Like the whole yeah. point is like to just kamikaze it because he has nothing left. But And then maybe it's like last blood, like it's his last blood, like his last relatives or whatever. Yeah. Have died. Oh, you I know don't what? know. Well, it kind of makes sense, except they're not blood related, but yeah, sort of. That makes a little bit more sense. I got nothing left. <laughs> sure. I don't know. Like Last blood. It, it was a Rambo movie, mm-hmm. so you know what you're getting. Yep. Is it a little shorter than I expected it to be? It didn't feel short, though, and for me, at least. I don't know how it felt. I just remember leaving. I was like, that was only an hour and a half? Weird. That's good, because we saw it at like 10.30. Yeah. yeah. And she's like, I'm going to fall asleep. Like, oh, no, you're not in this movie. <laughs> yeah. I was like, you might throw up. <laughs> <laughs> oh, Wait, was that your date movie for the week? Yeah. Oh, geez. We, we go to date movies on Friday normally, and so like. That's, that's so hilarious. Funny. I convinced her, because like, Ad Astra came out. Oh, yeah. She's like, oh, we should go see that. And I'm like, let's go see Rambo, please. Ah. please. And she's like, all right, fine. And then like, we'll we couldn't get a showing till later. And I was like, well, okay, how about we watch First Blood before we go see the second one? <laughs> I do want to see Ad Astra, though. Yeah, it looked good. Same here. Or go see Door of the Explorer. Actually, <laughs> um, I don't think it's showing anywhere. I mean, it's, on it's, drugs. It's showing like like three screenings in like all of LA. <laughs> the now. dollar theaters. Yeah, No, it was showing <laughs> at AMC, but like only like at 7 p.m., like in one small room in the in the theater me and rod or rkvc by the time you hear this we'll have the new song we did for our friend's wedding out in like spotify and youtube and all that stuff and you guys can catch these episodes on youtube as well as podbean if you have a podcast app just look us up yellow spandex and we release everything on wednesdays for that and we'll catch you guys next time on yellow spandex